Good afternoon, Ricardo Gambera with NLC in Washington, D.C. Uh, my question is, perhaps for those who have some background working with mayors and city officials, as we know, immigrant integration happens at the local level. And we talk all the time about the important role the mayors and local officials play in the immigrant integration process. So I know we don't have too much time today, so perhaps if you can offer one or two specific policy recommendations for mayors and local officials, how they can uh, do outreach and how they can improve their work with the local immigrant populations. Thank you. We could start with Aisha on that one because I know that the mayor of Stuttgart got very actively involved and maybe Tufail Chowdhury also from his uh, survey work with different cities has, has an idea. So brief answers perhaps on those two points, Aisha? Uh, yeah, just, just briefly. Well, uh, we, we, without the support of our mayor, we would never have been so successful as we are now. Uh, days after the, the um, adoption of the Pact for Integration. So you need a strong backup, and that means also you need resources, and that is our um, department, our department. We have an own budget to um, conduct or to support um, migrant associations to conduct their own uh, projects or events. So this is very important. And, and a second uh, aspect is um, the uh, public communication. Uh, our mayor it's just, I have this, our Pact for Integration, so this is our report of 2009. And this is translated into English. And this is very important with many, many pictures of, of good practices, of, of migrants and so forth. And this is um, communicated publicly in, in the news, in uh, uh, when he's um, holding his speeches, he's always saying, uh, um, more than um, people from more than 170 countries live in Stuttgart, and all people living here are Stuttgarters. This is very, very important to have this uh, positive uh, image of um, integration of the migrants and seeing migrants as a cultural diversity. To file anything to add? <coughs> um, and I think I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that in terms of m many of the cities that we covered had quite interesting positive identity campaigns focusing on the diversity of those cities as being a critical aspect of those cities and, in, and as a result encouraging a local sense of belonging which is much stronger in those cities than it was um, compared to um, national belonging and so I think those positive identity campaigns are quite important and also engaging with civil society and key actors to, to building up those relationships so that when there is a crisis or when there is a problem the relationships already exist on the ground so that they're not created in the sort of cauldron of a crisis. Um, good examples were ones where it was actually a researcher who brought together city officials and media um, people and local community civil society organizations as part of a research project. But it meant that in that city, those relationships already existed, um, had, had been developed over a two-year period through meetings, so that when there were crises taking place, the people had the phone numbers, had the contacts, had the details, and knew who to call and who to contact in order to ensure that their, pick, their stories were accurate and the stories reflected the reality that was happening on the ground. White shirt in the middle. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Juan Camilo Koch from the Migrants' Rights Network in the United Kingdom. Uh, my question was about uh, the New Haven case. Uh, basically, in the United Kingdom, it seems that the central government is trying to do everything that's possible for them to make life more uncomfortable for irregular migrants in the hope that they will leave the country. And as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen uh, local service providers or local authorities uh, challenging that position. And I get the sense that, that they're afraid to do so. I mean, they, they depend on, on, on resources coming from central government. I'm just wondering whether um, you have faced any difficulties with uh, the federal government uh, because of, of the work um, that you have done and how you have managed to do that, and, and vice versa, whether through your work you've managed to make inroads uh, towards uh, furthering the cause of, of um, a regularization in, in the US. Thank you. Sure. Um, the two days after the Board of Aldermen, which is our city council, voted in favor of the New Haven ID card, um, at, I think it was about 5.30 in the morning, there were a series of raids conducted by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is the federal enforcement arm of immigration. And they went into my neighborhood and targeted immigrants, and the pre they have pretextually were looking for people with outstanding warrants. 
they took 32 people away, and I believe four of them had um, warrants. And so it was clear to us that that was retaliation on the part of the federal government for um, engaging in immigration in a way that they did not um, they did not approve of. This was under the under the Bush administration, and um, our mayor is here somewhere, and I don't work for him, so I don't need to suck up to him, but let me say that he was absolutely fearless in his response, and so it just felt like the, for us, the mouse that warred, we basically kicked the federal government's ass. We demanded accountability, we demanded, um, we demanded an investigation, um, and we really, um, interestingly enough, forced them back. We then turned to Yale Law School, which is in our community and asked them to represent all of the people who had been detained. And thanks in part to Frank and other people in the media, they also helped us get the word out. And so it ended up being a story of the federal government acting like a bully to try to um, set the message for cities that were trying to engage in immigration-friendly immigration -friendly policy. So they ended up having um, egg on their face. And thankfully, none of those um, actually, all but two who asked for voluntary de uh, departure have been, uh, were deported. Just quickly, in terms of the impact of this, I'm happy to say that there are now six cities in the U.S. that have copied our model and now have um, ID cards that are either issued by city government or are approved by city government. And those include San Francisco, California, Trenton, New Jersey, Oakland, California, Princeton, New Jersey, and Asbury Park, New Jersey. And the mayor told me earlier that now the first bank has signed on to take it as a primary piece of identification. Yes, the, the, which, uh, uh, the FCFC bank, the community bank, first star bank. We have time for one more question. I had a request from back in the room. Yes, thank you. Hi, uh, Tim Reese. I'm with the city of Hamilton, which is an hour down the road from Toronto. So don't believe Canada is only Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sort of stuck on the question from the floor around what we do with the global nomads. And, and I think this is an interesting question in the sense that we've always looked upon, certainly within the Canadian context, of immigration being a, a, a nation-building exercise. And the reality now is that Canada receives more temporary migrants than it does permanent residents. And I think that's an increasing phenomena um, globally. How do we deal with or how do we respond to the increasing notion and the process of, of, of circulating migration and, 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 and the circular migrants. And I think that's, that's part of, the, of, our, of our modern reality that we have to adjust to and respond to. Uh, a sort of slight take on that issue is that one of the things that we picked up on several of the city reports was sort of at least anecdotal evidence of increasing numbers of particularly Turkish um, second generation minorities who are doing economically very well, but because of the hostility of the political environment, were choosing to migrate to other European countries or to look for careers in Turkey as well. So there's a um, real danger in which the sort of the brightest and the best of that second generation could be much more mobile and would be looking to leave to political and um, civil environments which are much friendly to them. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Very, very interesting questions from the floor. Thank you so much to all of you for your attention and your interest and your contributions, and to our panelists for a fascinating presentation of a very complex, multifaceted issue. So many thanks to all of you.